Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode three of the Redman and Riddle podcast. I'm Matt Redman, and this is Jeremy Riddle. Here, counted for. He's a good man. We're going to have a good conversation today. We're really enjoying doing these, diving into so hopefully some deep themes in worship. And we're speaking to ourselves just as much as to you. The we're truth. challenging ourselves on these the truth. issues and these different conversations. But it's kind of fun being a Brit and an American locked in a room together. <laughs> There's a good history of England and America teaming up. You've got Winston Churchill and FDR. That's true. You've got Strong. Maggie and Ronald. Ah. Come on now. That's hard to beat. <laughs> that is hard to beat. Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney. Cool. They, 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 they brought some, some stuff too. That's but here magic. we are. Matt Redman and Jeremy <laughs> We're Riddle. in the same league. <laughs> we, you know, yeah, exactly. We are <laughs> adding to and yet somehow ruining that grand <laughs> tradition. But we're going to have a conversation today around marketing versus mantle. Hmm. Buckle up your seatbelts. This is going to be a full on one. Hmm. And I know I'm going to find it challenging and hopefully you will too. It's so interesting with worship. N.T. Wright said only humans have the capacity to live as something other than what they were made to be. Wow. So we were made to be like God reflectors, and wow. image bearers and worshippers of Jesus. But he says trees behave as trees, rocks as rocks, the sea is and does what mm. the sea is and does. They just do what they were meant to do. But mm. actually as human beings, we have the capacity to actually be something else or do something else. Wow. And it's, and I think that's probably why we're doing this podcast. It's true. Because it's so easy to wander off. It's We have the ability to go off course and, and not, be in alignment with what we were meant to be, what we were meant to do, and how wow. we were meant to do it. Wow. And so I, I see that's probably the reason that, that you and I are talking today, right? That's true. And so our conversations are, are going to be heading in that direction, hmm. trying to realign, trying to get re-envisioned, trying to review and reimagine hmm. what it can mean, what worship can really look like if it, hmm. if it looks like what God wanted it to look like. Wow. So today, marketing versus mantle, two big words. Marketing, I guess we're talking about human efforts. We're talking right. about that thing where we just have to get involved to try and make this bigger or get the word out or try and even self-promote or something. Hmm. And then you've got the other side, the word mantle. In, in the Old Testament, a mantle signifies authority and hmm. anointing. It's, it's God backing up his calling on our lives. Wow. Um, it's actually a physical piece of clothing that they would wear a cloak or other such covering and it but it carried this symbolic purpose in the case of the prophets it was it was showing that they were wrapped in God's authority and it, it's a symbol of the anointing of the Holy Spirit <laughs> and, and I know it's pretty plain which one we choose <laughs> if you're put before you marketing you can try and do all this whole thing on your own <laughs> or you can just have this covering of God over your life right but it, but again it's so easy for us to slip into <laughs> The former one. Wow. And now Toza, now I might have quoted him <laughs> once or twice. We might have to rename this podcast yeah, literally. Redman, Riddle and Toza. <laughs> That's right. Because he's Toza's getting quite there. a good looking. He but he's pretty qu quotable. And, and considering the fact is decades ago, he's on point so much. He said this, and this was a shocker to me when I first read it. Promoting self under the guise of promoting Christ is currently so common as to excite little notice. Wow. I mean... I say it again because it's so good. Promoting <laughs> self under under the guise of promoting Christ is currently so common as to excite little notice. In other words, everyone's at it. Wow. Everyone's doing it. So it's just not even it, it's just become the norm. Right. It's not it doesn't shock anyone ever right. anymore. You see a pastor or a worship leader glorying in themselves or <laughs> bigging themselves up, hyping themselves up in some way or another, whether it be social media or or whatever, it doesn't even really set off the alarm anymore. No. And that, that kind of scares me. <laughs> uh, you know, rightfully so. I mean, I, I even think pointing, taking a deep internal look, I, you know, I, I, I think we're coming in this conversation, just so you guys know, like having been sifted, like having, having gone through these wrestles, we're, we're, not, we're not strangers to, to this. And, and I, I remember just multiple seasons in my life of kind of experimenting, particularly where we see this, like, you know, it's like social media is what exposes kind of like the basis of human nature, you know, yeah. and they literally just kind of lays it out. <laughs> and, and I think there's so much that's happening in Christian culture, in worship culture, that 
has given so much permission. And, and I, I think the, the, the way that I've learned most of these lessons are the way that I've, honestly, it's just been through personal experiences. You know, I've learned like, how do you navigate social media with any kind of purity? How, how, how do you navigate this stuff? Or when you put out a record, what is self-promotion and what is just basically saying, no, I believe this, you know, the importance of this and what the work that God has done. And, and again, it really comes down to, it's less sometimes, is less about the form something takes and far more, almost always far more about the posture of our hearts yeah. and what's going on inside of us than it is all the, the, the kind of exterior trappings of getting your songs or, or, or what you feel the Lord has put inside of you out there. And it's interesting that we dive straight into social media because that is a massive issue <laughs> it is. because it's we're huge. the first generation to have to navigate this. Exactly. So... It's always been, it's a temptation as old as mankind itself to kind of (laughs) shine some light on yourself, right? (laughs) Trying to make yourself look better than you are or more important than you are. I mean, Uh, the old uh, Greek myth of Narcissus, you know, who who, um, the kind of curse on his life was he he fell so in love with his own (laughs) reflection that he couldn't bear to leave the mirror. Wow. Kind of reminds me of selfie culture a little bit. (laughs) But this thing's not a new thing, but... The social media aspect of it is so new because we've never before lived in a time where it's so easy and so tempting to self-celebrate, self-congratulate, self-promote. And obviously that doesn't really fit with the values of a worship leader and and with worship. So how do you navigate that? Does it mean you have to be off social media? I don't don't really really think that can be a thing because that's one of the ways we do life now and communicate and it can be a fantastic tool in the kingdom of God, but how are we going to get through this thing and still live in that godly, God-centric way? And, and yeah. it's, it's challenging because, again, things become the norm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you remember, like, way back, there was the kind of humble brag hashtag thing going around. <laughs> so if you were caught, like, doing the old humble brag, like, you're trying to show off, basically, about yeah. something that you've been part of. Yeah. But you're trying to make it look like, you know, it was a God thing, maybe, or something. So you, but people were calling that out, right? Yeah. There was like, people would retweet that and put hashtag humble brag. People aren't doing it anymore because no, it's so normal. I know. It's so normal. You don't even need to. And like, it's kind of a it. weird, it's a weird thing that how, how do we navigate these things? Like the retweet, hmm. for me, that's a classic one where it's like, Yet that's a way of the world, but that shouldn't be the the way right. of the church. And, right. and and especially in the kind of worship leading community or maybe among pastors, what is mm-hmm. that all about? It says really clearly in Proverbs, mm-hmm. like, don't let your own mouth praise you. Let right. you know, let someone else's mouth do it. Right. When you do a retweet, you're going against the flow of that. You're basically <laughs> praising yourself. It's true though. And actually you're not even just repeating it, you're magnifying it, amplifying wow. it usually. Wow. Because you might have, say, your pastor's maybe got, I don't know, like 40,000 followers or 4,000. Right. Know. Someone with about 400 followers is putting, oh, pastor was the best sermon I ever heard today. Changed my life. I'm more like Jesus in an instant. <laughs> in and, an then, instant. and then the pastor or the worship leader retweets it to all their followers. Huh. So actually, we haven't even just repeated it. Huh. We've magnified, we've amplified. Um. the, the and, and it's a strange one. Yeah. Because it becomes so normal, um, but hmm. it shouldn't be normal. Hmm. No, I fully agree. I think, you know, when you're talking about marketing versus mantle, um, it's like marketing. It's basically what, what you're comparing, what we're, you know, comparing and contrasting is man-made momentum versus spiritual, real spiritual authority, which we were designed, we were made to carry real spiritual authority yeah. but what you're going to find is because there's so much warfare there's so much warfare over this like direction you know in our lives because what you know our worship follows like the course of our lives so if the enemy can misdirect or we can redirect you know our focus he he meddles a sen- in, you know in a sense with with the spiritual authority that we're actually meant to yeah we're meant to 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 carry in the earth and you know it's, it's so funny when when we were you know chatting about this um I just began to think about the temptation of Jesus. And when, and when Satan took him out, he, he took him to the, like one of those high places, you know, yeah. and he, he took him up there and he just said, hey, um, he literally, I, I'll, I'll just read it. He says, I will give you all this authority 
and their glory. He showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. He says, I will give you all this authority and all their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whom I will. And he says, all you have to do is worship me. And I, I just found it so interesting that that temptation of Jesus, at the heart of that temptation, was, was worship. And, and who we're actually seeking to glorify. And the way that Jesus answered that question, and I just, I, I don't know why. I, I, I feel like I'm still unpacking this at some level, like in my own life. But, but it's interesting that, G, that, that Satan tempts Jesus with something that Jesus was already set to inherit. Yeah. It's like something he was already born for. And, and I think, I think the, the issue, and I know this, there's so much warfare over this in my life, and I can get into my own testimony about, about that thing that we actually, know that we were born for significance, that we were born for glory. But what you have to settle, I mean, literally, it's a spiritual inheritance. Um, and I, I, could, I could pull up a verse for it because that's, that's really important and rightfully so. Um, it's, you know, Scripture says that we're heirs of God, fellow heirs with Christ, and that if we suffer with him, uh, with him we will also be glorified yeah. with him. And, and that's that, that thing. You were born for, to, for glory. You were actually wired for significance. It's a part of your inheritance as a son, or, uh, son and daughter of the, of, of the living God. But the thing that, that I just keep coming to over and over and over again, the path that the Lord is leading me to, it, it's, it, it's not the destination. It's how you get there. Yeah. And, and I think the temptation for us is, is the, the crossroads that we come to, that anyone who is going to move towards the call of God in their, uh, on, on their life is how you will achieve it. And there's always two paths. And there was two paths for Jesus. And he was tempted, he was tempted to go one path. He's like, hey, Satan's like, I got a super easy path for you. He's like, he's like, you get all this stuff. You get the glory. You get the authority. You know, you, you, you get yeah. all of this, but you, you have to do it my way. And and all he's really trying to do is 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 take he's he's trying to redirect the the, the path and ultimately it's so interesting because Jesus we already know that Jesus got all the glory and he now holds all the keys he has all the authority but the difference was the path yeah and the the path for Jesus was the cross the path for him was 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 brutality it was the anguish it was the seeming defeat of the cross because that was the will of his Father and I think at the core. Of this, of this marketing and 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 man made momentum versus you know authority is that the only way to get to the authority, the spiritual authority, to carry a mantle in God, like the only way to get there is you have to do that in alignment with the kingdom of heaven. You have to bring your yeah. whole life into alignment with that, and that gets deeply, deeply practical. Like, yes. and I could go through like. Because I'll tell you this, guys, the only way to successfully do social media is to die to social media. That's great. Like it literally is. Like the only way to actually have a healthy relationship with it is to not need it. And sometimes I think we we live in this deception that we have to have these things in our lives. Yeah. And I had to come out of that. Like, because yes. I mean, because I felt all this pressure of like, you got to steward your platform and you got to steward this favor and you got, and, and I think I had to come to a season where I'm like, no, I have to die to this. Yeah. Because this thing is actually subtly controlled controlling me and meddling with my spiritual authority. And the only way that. I can like be in re healthy relationship with this is to actually die to it. And now guys, like when I begin to reintroduce it a little bit, you know, into my life, I weigh and test every motive. And guys, it's brutally revealing. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it is. And and even little funny things like I love how ruthless you're being about that. We've got to be ruthless. You actually have to be. And and but also you said practical. So here's like one practical thing is let's stop the retweets, right, <laughs> of ourselves. And, but here's another one. Like let's do what Chick-fil-A do and be closed on Sundays. You, wow. I see people marketing wow. their stuff on Sundays. Right. Like, he, you know, here's my own new record. Here's this. And I'm like, hey, let's be a bit more Chick-fil-A about this. Like, wow. you know, the tiny little practical things wow. you can do. Wow. But you you say in your book actually you say uh, one point in the in the the reset mm -hmm. popularity will sift you like nothing else it's, and it's that, true. and that really hit me I I think yeah. I think you were asking basically is it possible to be popular and pure yeah you know is that <laughs> is that even possible what, uh, what do you think yeah well and the thing that I've discovered in that is yeah it, it is actually possible to yeah. be popular and pure we Jesus was actually remarkably popular. 
It says that he was he was mobbed literally everywhere he went. And, and so so we see this tension. And it also shows that as he was faithful to his father in all things, that not only was he mobbed, thousands left him. <laughs> it's like some of his messages they couldn't hang with. Yeah. And 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 I and I think what I've realized is like, yes, it's possible for these two things to coexist, but only if purity has is ready to literally annihilate its own popularity the second it knows it has to like purity yes. is the highest value and i i think i think it's it's even less about to me purity it, it's like what authority are you going to live under because spiritual authority flows downwards and the only way that that we stay under it the only way that we carry it is is we have to make sure our allegiance is is completely alignment with where it should be in alignment and i i think the thing guys is really what this comes down to is trust. I think this this comes down to what method will you trust? Yeah. And I think trust and and it's like will you believe what scripture says? Yeah. Will you will you put yourself under that? Jesus all, did it says he did not entrust himself to yeah. men. Yeah. He only entrusted himself to his father. And because he knew that like that's the only way to to maintain the authority and and the direction and the purity and the alignment that I that's the only way I fulfill my assignment on earth. So you have to stick to the principles you, of the literally. kingdom. Like God gives grace to the humble. Yes. You know, poses the proud. But if you want him to be working against you, be proud. Yeah, pre- precisely. But I think that the temptation what I've realized is 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 you know when when the where the rubber really meets the road is it's like this like when you watch cuz again it's so common. Like like you talked about, it's so common. And so you feel the the the, the temptation, the seduction that we that we face in this is like when everyone around you is is promoting themselves or whatever it is. And we can get into how to healthily do that with your with your your work. Cause I don't believe it's like hide it under a bushel. No, there's something about like uh, us being good stewards with what the Lord has given us, but there's a way to do that. And really that comes down to the heart posture. But before, without, without derailing this thought, what this comes down to is, is like, I've had to, because I, it's like, uh, man, I got so much. Uh, I could go into this here because the Psalms are full of this tension. If you yeah. go into the Psalms, it, it, it's like, Lord, like, look, look at the wicked. They're just, they're doing, like, again, we're not talking our brothers and sisters and Jesus being wicked. But the tension. I, lo- I love the severity of this podcast. We've <laughs> annihilate, <laughs> die, uh, it's, it's, you're it's, wicked. It, but yeah, but this, is, this but, is the real stuff. It is the real stuff. And it's the gospel. And it, the scripture is full of this stuff. It's not just, it, and it's full of it because I think it's that kind of radical allegiance to Jesus. It's the only way that you're going to walk this out. Because if yeah. you attempt to have like a 75% allegiance to Jesus, yeah. it won't go well. Yeah. Like you have to radically go all the way in. But man, I have been so tempted, like, and even, even actually compromised myself multiple times and even compromised my own convictions because I'm like, well, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm too extreme here. Maybe I'm too radical. It's like everyone around me is doing something with great success. Yeah. And we're tempted by the success. We're yes. tempted when we watch something work. Yes. Like, and, and it's fascinating to me that different things are okay in different environments. Precisely. So, for example, what I said about the retweet. Uh-huh. You now that same pastor or worship leader, they're not going to get up the next week at church in front of all the people and go, "Hey guys, before we start today, you won't believe what someone said about me this week. You won't believe." They said when I said that, they said it was absolutely life changing. Just wanted to let you know you that would never happen because that's weird. Yeah, but it's just as weird on social media, but it's, it's become normal. It's true. Another example. I've seen. I've literally seen a worship leader celebrating all over social media, the fact that their song had gone to number one on CCLI. Right. And, you know, and in other words, this is the most sung song. And I'm like, no, please, no. <laughs> I mean, firstly, that's just, it's no. just a little bit odd. But, uh, and, I, and I say these things for, you know, I'm also pointing the, the light on myself and I'm saying the totally. searching light, not the, the promotion light. Totally. It's very good, man. <laughs> yeah. It's good. You know, that searching spotlight and saying, Holy Spirit, search me. I've done a ton of things and said a ton of things, acted a ton of things. Wait, I should I'm not speaking as an expert here. You know, I'm I'm honestly, I promise you, we're challenging our own hearts here too. But so I'm not trying to pick on one example. But that example did make me a little bit heartbroken because I thought, oh, have we really got to that? You know, my song is the most sung song in the church right now. I mean keep that one to yourself maybe you wow. know and and again why it's strange is because you just wouldn't do that 
you wouldn't get away with that on a local church level. Wow. You wouldn't get up on the front of the church and say, hey, guys, about to sing a song. Um, you know, I uh, just want to let you know we've sung this more than all the other worship leaders' songs this <laughs> <laughs> this month or in a youth group you you wouldn't yeah. even have a job anymore you wouldn't That's have true. a role you'd be like hey uh, i think you should take a little bit of time out right but somehow it's okay on a certain level to get away with it i don't know what it is something wow. about this culture we're living well, in well it has it, it, it's got like its own set of rules yeah and and there's like a congruency like it, it's like no 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 if you wouldn't do that in this situation yeah. if you wouldn't even and maybe that's a good i think what what people need is just I found what I needed for, for my social media was I needed a process, like a sifting process. Before I posted, I had to put it, I had to put my motives through a series of checks. Yeah. And I, and I think just practically, guys, this is something you can, you can do for yourself. It's like, you know, is this in alignment with my calling? Is it like, what, what, what is really truly my root mode? If I, and you got to be honest with yourself, because yeah. if you're not honest, you can live in denial of so much that's happening inside of you. You have to be like, no, no, no. If I really take a deep look at inside of what's my motive here, is it actually pure? Is it for the glory of Jesus? Or, or am I just really trying to, even if, am I fishing for encouragement? You know, like what, what, is this coming out of a need in me or is this coming, uh, you know, out of what I actually should be love that be doing? You know, motive is such a motive key word. is massive. Such a key word. It is. I mean, even like let's think about like if you got to the point you've written some songs, you're going to record them, make a record. It, it, if you think about it, hmm. not done in the right way. It's a slightly arrogant thing to do. Like I've got these songs and you really need them. So I'm going to go to the trouble of recording them so you, to make sure you can have them. Now, Obviously, that's not what's happening. You've yes. got a team and you've got people, you know, affirming God's call on your life and right. saying, hey, you should put these songs out. That, But a lot of that process for me is about motive. Wow. It's about I'm not, uh, you know, how can I make sure that I'm still focused on building the kingdom of God and not yeah. the kingdom of yeah. Matt or the kingdom of Jeremy or whatever it is. As so much of it is about Motive, I think it's a really key word there. And and I think um, to me, the challenge is, it's, it's like a twofold challenge. Part of the challenge is character. Yeah. And part of the challenge is culture. Yeah. So we're in, we're in this culture where so many things are whack. They're not how the kingdom of God works. That's they're true. how the kingdom of this world works. Right. And, you know, and we, we've been really intent on getting our worship into the world but we've got to make sure the world doesn't get into our worship that's right you know Come they say on. isn't it it's not the ship in the sea that sinks the ship a ship was meant to be in the sea that's what it's made for wow but it's when the sea gets, gets in, in the, the ship. ship wow and and that's the problem we've got to look at the, like where are the that's areas so when it comes to worship music worship songs worship leadership worship culture where are the areas where the 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 values of this world have seeped in yes to the ship yes and so that so so that's on one that. area, and then the other area is the character side of things, and that whole thing of kingdom thinking, being ruthless with your heart, not right. believing your own hype, believing that the principles of the kingdom work, like you mm. said, mm. Philippians chapter two verse three, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. That's a wonderful verse. Do, <laughs> don't do anything. Don't tweet. Don't retweet do from there. Nothing. Don't lead from there. Don't write Not from there. Don't record thing. from there. Yeah. Don't serve from there. Wow. Don't do anything from selfish ambition wow. or conceit. Definition of conceit, an excessively favorable opinion of one's own ability or importance. Hmm. Have you done anything? Uh, I know I have. Yeah. Like the, where, I, where I've caught myself out. Doing something with a bit more, a bit too favorable opinion of <laughs> of my own importance. <laughs> wow! There's a guy called Robert Murray McShane. He actually does a fantastic. He, he he's not alive anymore, but he did a fantastic one year Bible. If you ever <laughs> looking for a fresh one, where you wow. read little, four little readings every day, wow. wrote some hymns and sermons, all sorts of things. But this guy, Robert Murray McShane, he says a man cannot be a faithful minister until he preaches Christ for Christ's sake. Wow. Until he gives up striving to attract people to himself and seeks only to attract them to Christ. Wow. And I love that. I was watching this nature documentary the other day. Sir David Attenborough, have you come across him? I haven't. You, you, come on, mate. <laughs> this is, it's, 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 that upsets me. 
that you haven't heard of say, Sir David Attenborough. Uh, he's like, I don't know, he's like this kind of warm grandfather-like figure on BBC these days, doing all these nature documentaries. What actually happens is when the American versions go out, you usually replace him with Oprah's voice. That's probably true. So, <laughs> so uh, look, one day, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to him. But I was watching right. this the other day, and he was called Life in Colour. It was all about hmm. Amazing color in 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 nature, hmm. and and he's showing the adult peacock, the male peacock, and it's just a gloriously beautiful, colorful thing. True, but it, but he was talking about how it's weighed down with feathers. That wow. big display it can put on weighs it down, so it can't actually fly very well. <laughs> and, and this thing he said really hit me. He said being able to look this impressive comes at a cost. Wow. And I thought, wow, I that, love that. That's what we're talking about here. Sometimes Peacock, he can mesmerize you with his 200 colorful patterned feathers. The downside is he's a, his ability to fly has been inhibited. He can't even get, hardly get off the hmm. ground for very long, hmm. which is essentially what most birds, birds are decide, it's uh, true. designed to do. And maybe that's a little picture for us today. You know, we, we know how to dazzle sometimes, but do, do we still know how to fly? Yeah, and, so real. And, you know, we know, we know how to hold people's attention and yeah. to get them all journeying together, but do we still know how to soar wow. and, and are all lead in the spirit and just make this a much more of a spiritual occasion than it is a musical one? And so, so for me, they're two of the big words for me, character and culture. Yeah. Um, a lot of this is about the foundation. Yeah. A lot of these, we've talked about a lot of little practical things or the ways that we're seeing these things come out in our leadership or the way we do life. But actually, essentially, you have to get back to the foundations. I, I remember the old example that I heard years ago, and it's never left me. It's like with, with a ship, with right. a boat. Like if you go, if, I, if someone like me knows nothing about boats, I go down to the shipyard, the boatyard, the dock, or whatever. and I see this boat and I'm like, wow, that's impressive. I love the, I don't even know what the things are called, like the steering wheel thing <laughs> it's got, you know, it's got, that looks cool. There's amazing sails and a wonderful shiny deck. Such a lovely boat, right? But hmm. someone who really knows more about boats, like a nautical engineer, they'll yeah. go down there and they'll see all that stuff too. And yeah, right. this is good and that's impressive. But I wonder what it's like below the waterline and what, what the right. structure and the design is because the truth is with a boat, What's below the waterline has to outweigh what's yeah, above the waterline. Be yeah, because <laughs> when you're out on a rough get, sea, yeah. you don't care how shiny the boat there. is. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you care when how you get out there it is. doing what you were designed to do. <laughs> you've got to make sure the first sign of That's winds right. or a storm or something, you're not going over. That's right. That the ballast, what's below the waterline, has to outweigh what's above the waterline. And I think that's what we're talking about here. That at the end of the day. Well, you can all do that stuff in public or on a stage or we can sing our songs and lead our songs. But at the end of the day, what's below the waterline, it's going to have to outweigh what's above. And by the way, for any boat fans listening, I didn't, <laughs> I, I wasn't intending on giving two boat examples <laughs> in this podcast. It's become a little bit more nautically themed than I imagined. I hope I've made you happy today. It's good. It's good. Hey, I, I think just a couple other challenges here is when you were talking about, because, you know, one way, what we celebrate, and it's it's really what we're talking about, what we celebrate and how how we celebrate. You know, these are two real challenges, I, I think, in, in the church. And it's just so interesting, even when what Jesus would correct, even in his disciples, you know, it's funny, they came back from their first ministry trip. He sent them out in, in pairs, and, and they came back, and they came back just stoked out of their minds. They're like, Lord, demons are submitting to your name. We, we healed people. They were just... Totally stoked. And what's funny is, is it was both affirming that, but also correcting something in them. He's like, hey, he's like, don't, don't celebrate this right here. Celebrate that your names are actually written in the book of life. He kind of redirected that. But I, I've often thought the church really needs to think through what they celebrate because what we celebrate, we hold up as a noble pursuit. Yeah. I, and I think when we celebrate numbers, we, we, we don't do anyone, that model itself is actually the, the not the kingdom model. It, it, it doesn't actually represent success. Yeah. And, and I think, again, we're talking about the warfare of kingdoms. We're talking about what, what is significant to the world versus what's significant to the kingdom of heaven. And as a believer, all we're living for is what's significant to the kingdom of heaven. 
because it really doesn't matter. You can have, we know this in, in, in part, you can have the number one CCL I saw. You can have all of these things and miss the mark in eternity. And oh, what a tragedy that would be. The only way that we know we've actually hit the mark in our lives is if we've been faithful and obedient to the calling on our lives. And, and I just think what we celebrate and how we celebrate it really matters. Yeah. At the same time, I'll tell you this, when there is a culture of encouragement, when, 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 when we actually learn how to encourage one another, when we learn as the family of God how to honor what's on each other's lives, we will find that it diffuses a lot of this. A lot of people out there are simply trying to encourage themselves. Yes. Like, like they're, 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 they're moving out of a deficit. And, and again, half the time, what's so interesting is that we can be encouraged by quote unquote people who are fans of our lives, but that they know nothing about it. But we can be deeply unencouraged and unrecognized and unhonored in our closest circles. And I think what's going to be really, really challenging for, for the church is how are we honoring each other? Like, like in our in our relationship is is in one sense we're, you know, we're peers in one sense, da 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 da. But but I realize that that like there is something powerful that happens. The more I grow in relationship with you, the more I honor who God has made you to be, the more I yeah. recognize. And there's something that transforms. It actually kills the need for us to self-promote. That's great. Like when we have a family yeah. that's around us going like, you, this is what you carry in the Lord. This is who you are in the Lord. And oh my gosh, we, we like when they celebrate, not the numbers, because the numbers don't matter, yeah. you know, but when they celebrate the thing Oh man, because we need to be encouraged on on the things that have been actually terrible. They've done. They, there are so many things that we've done in our lives that we need to be encouraged. And if we if we have the kingdom perspective, it's like it doesn't matter if that song didn't even make a dent. We just go, oh my gosh, yeah. the Lord was on that. But man, I just want to come back to this thing because I know when I have people around me that celebrate me and honor celebrate me. It sounds like a, a selfish <laughs> thing, but, but, nah, but, but, but there's actually, saying, yeah. there's actually true. It's, it's, it's like, we're not supposed to be a culture that does not encourage one another. Yes. It's like, we're supposed to be deeply encouraging. And sometimes we feed on other sources yeah. because we lack encouragement. And the way that we show the heart of Christ towards one another is learning to honor, learning to call out, learning to lift up our brothers. I love that. I, it makes me think about a time I realized I was at this conference and there was three of us leading worship. Hmm. And yet I realized I was only praying for the times when I led worship. <laughs> and it made me realize, okay, uh, so I say I'm concerned about the glory of God, but I'm, apparently wow. I'm only concerned about it when I'm leading the <laughs> yeah, songs. Because, yeah. And that, wow, that was a little that, telltale sign. It, it made me think, like, I've got to champion my friends, That's cheer right. them on, pray for them, yes. encourage and affirm. So I absolutely love what you're saying there. That is so true. Yeah. You and I have been around long enough to know also that when you look back on something and you see it was all God's work. Right. And, you, you know, you didn't manipulate that thing into right. being. You didn't make right. it happen. You know, you, you didn't give it all like human made momentum. Right. It was the breath of God on something. That's right. It's such a lovely feeling, honestly. You There's look back like and it. think, well, that, that door opened and that definitely wasn't me. And yeah. I thank you, God, for That's trusting right. me with that. And wow. I hope I did my best for you in that, but I, I, it's so, I was going to say satisfying, but I don't know what the word is. It, it, it's, a, it's a nice feeling when you think, oh, that was the hand of God. Right. For me, a lot of it would be exemplified in the song 10,000 Reasons. Right. I didn't do anything different. Right. Just tried to write a little song. Wasn't right. even going to put it on the record, honestly. <laughs> didn't think it was finished. It's amazing. You didn't have a pre-chorus, a bridge. <laughs> you wrote it pretty it's fast. missing vital elements yeah. for any worship song And so out there. <laughs> I, I'm glad I had a team because they were like, hey, you should put that one on. Wow. It literally wouldn't have gone on the record. Wow. But then just seeing how God breathed on it and we nothing, we didn't do anything different. And I just... Some of the stories that came back, right. I love the immeasurable things in life where it's like you can't right. put a chart of numbers on this. Some of the stories, That's right. I, had a story, I had a story come back even this week from that song where someone who was going to be with the Lord, they had that song on repeat in their earphones. <laughs> and so they'll, kind of the song, I guess, ushered them into being with Jesus. Oh, I, I, oh. I don't know what even to say about that. That's it's so, so true. for God to trust you with that stuff where it's immeasurable. Wow. And I look at that and think, that's not my hands. That's not my doing. I just wrote a little song. That's the breath of God. Wow. And, it, and, it, and it's, a, it's a really lovely thing, isn't it? When you get to look back, you think, when you get to be involved and partnering in some little way with this, with the ministry of God. Wow. 
it, it feels like you're in the flow of what you were made to do, and, you, oh, and it's gosh. lovely. That, and there's that nothing, wasn't me. I there's didn't engineer nothing that. like that. And something you just said that triggered. You said it's 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 remarkable when God entrusts you with something like that. And I this this is my encouragement to to any of you listening out there is that that really is the struggle is what what you can apprehend by yourself. Like this is the real wrestle, and what you can only apprehend when you entrust yourself to God. But I I just I want to encourage you guys with this, and I discovered this through failure more than I discovered it through success. And I'm so grateful. Like for those moments where I'm like, it was the breath of God. And then there were times where I tried to grab that steering wheel and I tried to steer my own life. And it was honestly, I'm so grateful that the Lord allowed me to fail. He literally allowed me to fail whenever my hand gripped that steering wheel. And I tried to be a, like a good, thoughtful business person, you know, da, da, da. like the Lord never, ever allowed favor to come when I when I held on to this steering wheel. It was only when I completely released it. And wow. I, I think what I want to encourage is, guys, is there are things that the Lord will entrust you with if you will entrust yourself to him, like remarkable things, things that will shake, like, like God's, God wants to literally transform the globe through your life. Like yeah. he wants your life to make a mark. He's designed it that, that to, to make a mark, but, but you won't even touch that mark if you are the one trying to cr- control the outcomes and, and the thing. Yeah. You have to entrust yourself to God. Yeah. And when you do, it's only then that you'll taste like, oh, this is possible like only with God. Yeah. And, and once, you, once you taste it, it's really all that you need to keep moving in that direction. There's and, something and, big there. And though. if you're listening and, and you may be leading a home group, maybe a life group, maybe right. leading in the service at church, where, wherever it is that you're, lead, you're leading, the principles are the same. It's true. And, and one principle I've always tried to live by is from Scripture where it says, the doors he opens, no one can close. That's right. The doors he closes, no one can open. That's right. You don't have to manipulate your way into leading more, you know. It's or, true. Because just follow the principles of the kingdom and God right. will do what he wants to do. Right. When, it, when in the Old Testament, when, the, when uh, Saul gets anointed to be king, it says, now do whatever your hand finds to do for the Lord is with you. Wow. And that is wonderful advice. Like, don't go trying to make this happen for yourself. Right. You don't have to push yourself. You don't have to big yourself right. up. Just follow the principles of God in his kingdom, and, and the rest will take care of itself. He'll, he'll let you lead on whatever space, level, or environment he wants you to lead in. So I, I've loved this chat today. This is a good one. This is it. This is <laughs> I. It, it's stirring me up, and, it, and it's <laughs> me making too. me think, oh, Lord, I've got some learning to do here. John Wimber, the late John Wimber, mm-hmm. who we both knew, he said this. He said, historically, every move of God has produced new music. Sometimes the music precipitated revival. Sometimes it occurred during the revival. Mm-hmm. But it was always present in the aftermath. Mm-hmm. Now think about it. If worship's part of every movement of God, where do you think the enemy will attack? And wow. do you think he will have mercy and not attack at the point of weakness? Wow. If you think that, you don't know anything about him, the <laughs> enemy, and you don't know anything about the art of warfare. Wow. And I think this is why this is so important. That's These conversations yeah. are important. This is a key thing to get right. There's a call and a challenge and it's a matter of the utmost important that we pursue purity in this work in these Come days. On. Pure hearts, yeah. pure lives, pure songs, pure motives, pure Jeez. practices, pure ministry, pure worship. Wow. And, and so that, that's why I'm loving having these conversations. Me too, my friend. <laughs> so we've got our friend Quinton here who's going to begin to play now. We're going to pray together. Yeah. Um, we, we love to end these, um, these podcasts always so it's not just a cerebral exercise and some kind of intellectual conversation, you know, that's all mind-based. We want this to be heart-based. and we want, mm. we want to provide a space where we can have a sailor moment, just pause and just ask the Holy Spirit to apply any of this that, that he wants to to our lives. And so as we pray now, you, you might, something might come to mind. You think, oh, yeah, I've, I've gone off course in that direction. And you know, you might want to say sorry for that. It might be other things you, God wants to affirm in you mm. and encourage you in. And, mm. and, and I'm sure that's going to happen too. <laughs> there's a preacher, he, he once says, the Christian who stopped repenting has stopped growing. <laughs> and there's a lot in that. There's <laughs> a lot in that. You know, we, we're not at all coming at this today thinking we're experts and we've got this all yeah. sorted out. Um, every few minutes, as we spoke even, I feel like the Holy Spirit highlighted to me, yes, yeah, some growth needed there still. So Lord, I say, um, 
just as I've been saying down a lot of the years, I'm, I, I, I love to worship you and I'm sorry, Lord, when I, for the things I've made it sometimes. I'm sorry, Lord, sometimes when I've put too much of me in the mix or wow. when my motives have been askew or <laughs> when I've gone off track and not been found living and ministering in the principles that you, you set forth in your word. So I say sorry today, Lord. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for growth and I ask for just that grace to go forward and do it right. That's right. Yes, God. I feel like the Lord in this moment is wanting to bring freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And there's freedom for you, many who are listening today. There's freedom for you. The enemy is uh, not the enemy. The Lord isn't. Is, he's not trying to rob you. He's not trying to withhold any good thing. He says he withholds no good thing, no good thing from you. And the enemy, I, I think, literally tries to come in and, and deceive and be like, if you if you do this, like the Lord is withholding. The Lord is withholding. He is not. The Lord here is here to bring freedom, mm. and He's here to break addiction that's actually hurting you. Addiction to your own momentum, and you know, addiction to, to the praise of man, addiction to all of these things. The Lord is here to bring freedom because those things are actually sickening your soul. Like they're sickening your, your life. And, and when you taste the freedom of living purely and solely for the Lord, there is no going back for you. And the Lord just wants to bring liberty in this moment. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would do the surgery in our hearts, that you would cut out the tumors, you would, you would take out the things that are actually sickening us, that we're holding on to because somehow we think that we're getting life from these things. But Lord, you're like, no, 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 you, those things are killing you. They're not bringing life to you, Lord. So I pray that even right now, you would put your finger on the things that are sickening our souls. The things that we're trying to prop ourselves up in, uh, uh, up in Lord, the, the promotion that, that is causing us to run and strive and try and maintain something, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. But life with you, when we're yoked to you, the burden is light. The burden is easy. So, Lord, come now in this moment and bring freedom to your people. Yeah. yeah. Freedom, Jesus. We thank you for grace today. Yeah, come on. I oh, just thank you for your heart of grace. We just breathe that in today, like breathe in as wow. just as just as fully as you you throw yourself down and, and repent. Just as as fully as you do that, breathe in, take a big breath in the grace of God over your life today. That oh, forgiveness, geez. that freedom, that acceptance. <laughs> warmth in the Father's heart for you today. His smile over your life. That's right. Let's breathe in today. Oh, well, we just say today, we live for you and you alone. <laughs> we live for you and you alone. Your approval and your approval alone yes. is all that matters. And there is freedom in living under this. There's freedom from not living under the vast array of opinions of man and what we should do, God. Yeah. There's just absolute freedom today for just living for your voice and your voice alone. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's wonderful. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins. So we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, his glory is his kingdom. Uh, that's what we're concerned about. So please keep tracking with us. We have some more episodes coming up, some really great conversations we're going to be having, things that are stirring us both up. Can't wait to get into those. And um, God bless you today, wherever you're listening to. I hope this has been helpful, and we'll see you next time. Hey, before we go, I wanted to just let you know how you could be part of this ongoing conversation too. Jeremy and I have decided to record some question and answer special episodes where we'll take some questions and comments from worship leaders and worshippers around the world 
and then let you guide the conversation. So if you'd like to try and contribute, then here's how. We've got a special phone number with a voicemail set up. So call 1-888-774-5679, which is 1-888-77-GLORY. That's 1-888-774-5679 or 1-888-77-GLORY. Leave Jeremy and myself a message and we'll see where it goes. We so look forward to hearing from you. But for now, thanks so much for listening in. And if this podcast series has been of benefit to you in any way, please do subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And please do recommend it to other worship leaders, pastors, and worship teens, and any just full-on worshipers who you think might like to take a listen. Finally, a big thanks to all who have helped us pull this together today. Thanks to Gold Pacific Studios in Orange County, California, where we recorded these. And to Quinton, our keyboard player, who's been in the room each time. And a big thanks to Sam Bailey for the theme music. A massive thanks to Jason Jones, Andrew Senga, and all of the Integrity Music family who've done so much to make these podcasts happen. God bless you today, wherever you are. We'll see you next time on the Redman and Riddle podcast. Also, just to say, we'll be taking a break for a couple of weeks. And we'll be back soon with a Q&A special. So make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye on when we're back. Can't wait to see you soon.